Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel, Ashley here. I really wanted to chat about my first impressions of moving to Melbourne, Australia in 2024. Just to preface, I did get a cat, which I will uh, be chatting about in another video, as well as apartment updates, life updates. But if you want to see me posting a lot more in real time, make sure to head over to my Instagram or my TikTok, both at Coffee Nut. But that is why there's random cat toys absolutely everywhere at the moment. It's been such a lovely first month in Melbourne, and I really wanted to chat about like my main shocks and first impressions of moving here. But before we get into it, have you hit the subscribe button yet? I would love to get to 5k subscribers. I'm not too far off. It would mean a lot to me. If you see that red button, it says subscribe. You just click it and it would mean a lot. Thank you. First impressions of Melbourne, the weather. So I was warned about the weather here in Melbourne being, I forget the term for it, but basically in um, some of my previous videos here on YouTube and then on other platforms, I got a lot of comments warning me about the weather, being like, oh, be prepared for the weather, this and that, and just so many different things. But of course, someone saying it and then actually experiencing it is completely different. But I definitely do agree that Melbourne does get, I, I guess the rep for four seasons in one day, which I swear at one point I felt this way about Tasmania. So I moved from Tasmania to Melbourne, but I've been in Australia over two years now, which is insane to think about. But it's really interesting in reference to the weather because I feel like overall the weather here in Melbourne is quite similar to Tasmania, like it's not that far off, which is crazy to me because obviously Tasmania is seen as a much more like frigid, cold, extreme place to live. But then it's so funny because I swear the first day last week, beginning of last week, it barely got below 25 and I was on my morning commute on the tram and someone was in a puffer coat. And I was like, this would never happen in Tasmania. Like I feel, I mean, naturally people are a lot more fragile to changes in weather here. And also umbrellas are a lot more common here. I swear no one in Tasmania used umbrellas, which could just be because I wanna say overall Tasmania was a lot more windy, at least Hobart was, but no one really used umbrellas down there, but so many people use umbrellas which I think is so normal to use umbrellas. Even when I lived in Tasmania, I was using them. Also, a lot of people use umbrellas to block the sun here as well. Like I just feel like Melbourne in general, a lot of people are a lot more fragile to weather. Two, the amount of options Melbourne has. Now this might not sound like that big of a deal because it's like, what? Well, of course, Ash, like it's a city. You lived in Tasmania where I don't even know what the population is off the top of my head, but quite small compared to a massive city of Melbourne. But I would say still the fact that in the little suburb that I live in, there's so much to do, places are open past 5 p.m. I had to go to an after hours doctor um, a couple weeks ago and so many options for booking an appointment, and it didn't cost an arm and a leg. Like it was only a little bit more than what a normal GP would cost. And it was so easy, it was so convenient. I forgot what it was like to live not in such an isolated place like Tasmania. It's so refreshing. Like I, I chatted, I'm sure I'll do a bit more chatting in hindsight about leaving Tasmania and my thoughts on that in general more in hindsight, but first off, it's just really refreshing. I love that there's so many more dairy-free options, like whether it's ice cream or pizza or Mexican food. I find that so many more cafes actually try to keep an audience like that because here in Melbourne, especially cafes, if you're not on your A-game, well, people have so many other options to go to. Whereas, for example, down in Tassie, it's like, okay, well, if the cafe isn't amazing, well that that's it. Or there might be two other options and that's it. So it's kind of a bit more like the, the standards overall are a lot lower in other places, which again makes sense because Melbourne is a city and even the surroundings suburbs are just so full of life. And I really miss that. Like I really miss living in a place full of life. But Melbourne has been so inclusive with dietaries. It's just been so awesome to see how many amazing small businesses there are here. Like there are so many and so many have such unique ideas and oh, it's just been so exciting. 
And then three going off of that, although Melbourne is such a massive city, one thing that I was really worried about moving, especially from a much smaller city, if you could call it, with Hobart is what I loved about Hobart and Tasmania is it still had a massive community aspect. Like I could go wherever and run into people that I knew. Both good and bad aspects to that, but overall it was really refreshing and really lovely moving internationally to be able to go around and just see familiar faces. So I was worried moving to a big city that it was gonna be a bit more standoffish. Like for example, being from the New York area in the States, I very much was like, expecting maybe a bit more of that, but that's not the case at all. Melbourne has such a massive community aspect, which is so refreshing and makes me so happy. Even in the suburbs, running into people that you know and seeing familiar faces and everyone has been so nice. Like I was expecting to move to a city and, and run into so many cold hearted people, but that has not been the case and I am beyond grateful. Again, just moved here, so that could change. But at the moment, so grateful. Four, although Melbourne is a city and just like most places in Australia at the moment, there is a massive cost of living crisis, housing crisis. Overall, I don't find the cost of things that much higher. I find it quite similar to Tassie. I think, of course, it's very relative to what you're used to and where you live, your circumstances, of course. But for me, I found that it's not that much higher. Of course, there are some things that are more expensive than others, but I feel like it's also hard for me to say because Tasmania is kind of in a league of its own for the most part. But overall, like groceries, food, like day-to-day -day life, coffee, things like that, I don't find the cost of living that much higher, which is a really nice surprise because I was expecting moving to a city and having to save up so much more for going out to eat, going for a drink and things, but I find it's, it's quite similar to everywhere else that I've been in Australia. Five, the public transport. Oh my gosh. Okay, yes, I've uh, tripped on tram lines multiple times, um, and yes, I've injured myself doing so. And you know, I have my, my moments, I can be quite oblivious, but my experience with public transport here in Australia is night and day better than anything I've ever experienced in the US. Europe is in a league of its own. I will give give them that. And I haven't really experienced much public transport in other areas of the world. Like I've heard great things about different parts of Asia, but public transport in Australia is so much better than the US and specifically Melbourne. I've been just so pleasantly surprised with how easy it is, how frequent, even on public holidays and weekends, the trams and the trains run. I haven't really done much with the buses because just the trams and the trains are so convenient, but it's overall just been so nice. The only thing is it, it is quite expensive. Like I'm, I swear every time I tap my Mikey, it's $6, which does add up, but I would gladly pay that knowing that I can show up to a tram stop and know that on average I'm waiting five minutes for a tram, max 10, if I literally just miss one or if there's a delay, but so, so nice. Even on weekends and even on public holidays, like in Tasmania, there'd be a bus or, well, cause Tasmania only has buses, once every two hours, if that some days, which was horrible. And then also you can live track, like trams and trains and everything here in Melbourne, like the technology, so nice. So, 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 so nice. I'm mind blown. It's been so lovely. Thank you, Melbourne. Six. This one, I think I chatted about a little bit before, but living here has definitely made this a lot more obvious for me is how trend driven Melbourne is. Melbourne is so trend driven, which being a city, I can most definitely understand a lot more than say Tasmania or even a smaller city like Hobart, but in my experience going to cities, living in cities, I've never been somewhere that is so trend driven. Like for example, New York City is not this trend driven. Like say if a cafe came out with something or oh my gosh, a massive trend right now here in Melbourne is panini sandwiches or no, focaccia sandwiches, focaccia sandwiches. 
which I've yet to try, but it's on my list. But everywhere I pass, the line is insanely long. But for example, a cafe or one small business will come up with this idea, it'll get massive online, and then all of a sudden, other places are popping up being like, ooh, I'm doing focaccia sandwiches. Or a big thing right now is, I think it's good measure. I've not been to the cafe yet. Um, here in Melbourne came out with this coffee beverage called the Mont Blanc. And it's like a massive thing if like your cafe does a Mont Blanc. Whereas I swear in places like New York City and literally every other city I've been to would just be like, I don't care if another cafe does that, like we're not doing that. So it's really interesting. It's really interesting. And I really want to delve into it more and get other people's takes on it because I've barely been here a month, well, just over a month now, but which is crazy. But so trend driven, it's so interesting. So interesting. I don't know, cause well, social media is a lot more of a thing here for sure. So much more than Tasmania, which again, I'm not surprised by, but it's yeah, so interesting. And I'd love to chat more about it. And if you've noticed any of these things or if you've moved to Melbourne or have been to Melbourne and have realized anything or if there was anything that shocked you about the city in general, I would love to hear it down in the comments. I. It's so fun to me to learn more about where I'm living and different things. Like I just still find these things so interesting. I'll have links up here as well as I'm sure down the side, you'll see some of my other content. I've done a lot more recently about, in hindsight, after two years, what I really wish I knew before moving to Australia, reverse culture shocks. I recently went home to the States and different things that uh, stood out to me. So definitely make sure to go check that out. But I'm really loving Melbourne. It could just be this is my first month, those rose colored glasses on, but I'm really loving it and I can't wait to explore more and I can't wait to share with you more and I appreciate you guys and I will catch you guys next time. Bye.